Hi, I'm Chaplain Beth. I'm a Christian Science Corresponding Chaplain with the Christian Science Committee on Institutional Work here in California. Christian Science Corresponding Chaplains have a unique opportunity to provide continuous and ongoing Christian Science ministry to those incarcerated individuals who don't have a visiting chaplain in their area to visit them. And what's really wonderful is that they can also help in that transitional period immediately following an inmate's release and help with guiding them toward Christian Science resources such as church services, reading rooms, perhaps continuing to send the Bible lessons, and most important, providing spiritual, prayerful support to these individuals because they are navigating so many uncertainties as they reintegrate into society. Prayer is just invaluable. Since we've had this pandemic hit, um, it's interesting because visiting chaplains, who normally visit the inmates, of course, can't go into the facilities. And they have become de facto corresponding chaplains and continue to write their inmates, continue to minister that way, uh, sending in Bible lessons, sentinels, um, materials that are very supportive. And I just love what um, I heard one chaplain share recently. Uh, she said, you know, things may be shut down, but no one is shut out from God's presence. So I've been asked the question, how do inmates know about this Christian Science Corresponding Chaplain Program? Well, I would say primarily inmates who have already been ministered to by a visiting Christian Science Chaplain or attending Christian Science Church services at their facility. Uh, they have been transferred and have been told by their visiting chaplain about the program. And one of the great resources that we're sharing now is a, a bookmark that chaplains will give to inmates. So when they're transferred, it has the contact information for the State Institutions Committee on the back. They have a P.O. box and a phone number, and that's been really invaluable. Another way an inmate might find out about the program is they may have been given a piece of Christian science literature or a copy of Science and Health uh, or a Bible from another inmate and we always stamp our literature with the state committee information so uh, that could be another way they got in touch with us. Um, it's very interesting because at one point I was writing to an inmate in a federal prison here in California and he actually found out about Christian Science through a copy of Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures, which is the Christian Science textbook written by Mary Baker Eddy. A copy of Science and Health was left in his cell. And so when he first entered his cell, there it was. And he, I believe, if I remember right, asked a relative to find out more about Christian Science and let him know how he could study more. And I believe this relative found the Light in Prison website and got in touch with the state committee that way and therefore I was uh, appointed as a corresponding chaplain. And we had a wonderful, uh, maybe you know, several months of, of letters back and forth, very deep, um, before he was transferred to a prison, federal prison out of state. This inmate was in solitary confinement, so these letters were very uh, meaningful to him. You know, it's great to hear the inmates' uh, gratitude for what Christian Science is bringing into their lives while they're incarcerated. I'd like to read you uh, something that an inmate wrote to me. I'm noticing a deep change within me. All the reading material from Christian Science is so rewarding for my spiritual pathway. I'm so deeply grateful for the Christian Science Institutional Work. I get so many letters of gratitude from the inmates. One recently uh, wrote to me saying that he was taking a four-year Bible correspondence course while he was incarcerated, and I applauded him on that. I love to hear that they're taking advantage of all the programs that will assist them in their spiritual growth. 
And he said it was specifically a Bible leadership program. And I happened to notice that I had a, an old Christian Science Sentinel with the topic of true leadership. And I mailed that to him and said, you'll get a lot out of these articles. And he sure did. He thought that those articles were, uh, were wonderfully inspiring, um, really helped him in this course, and he shared the Sentinel with everyone else in that class. So what I'd say to someone who's interested in looking into becoming a Christian Science Corresponding Chaplain is that you don't need to fear that you have to reinvent the wheel here. Um, there are already procedures and uh, guidelines to guide you in the work. Uh, this is really a perfectly safe ministry. We don't use our last names in our correspondence. Um, all correspondence goes through the State Committee P.O. Box in Hollister. And so, um, you know, inmates write to the State Committee and we write back with a label from the State Committee office uh, on the envelope. What's really necessary in this work of being a corresponding chaplain? To me, it all boils down to love for God, love for my fellow man, love for Christ Jesus' example, and love for the teachings of Christian science which show us how the law of God's love is practical and provable in anyone's life. You know, I always like to think of that verse from Isaiah. I love this. It's from the contemporary English version. It reads, The Lord God gives me the right words to encourage the weary. You know, sometimes inmates will not be vulnerable enough to share in their correspondence, you know, their deep feelings or their fears. And as a corresponding chaplain, I need spiritual discernment sometimes to address those underlying fears. And I'm, I'm grateful that we all are given that spiritual discernment to understand you know, what's the question behind the question. I'm sure all the other dedicated corresponding chaplains in this program would agree with me that this ministry by mail is such a mutual blessing. And speaking of blessings, I always like to include a, a benediction or a blessing at the end of my inmate letters. Uh, it, it's usually a passage from scripture and I'd like to share my favorite one. It's from Jeremiah. I know the plans I have for you, says the Eternal. Plans for peace, not evil, to give you a future and a hope. Never forget that.